I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. We have a great show for you with amazing homes all over the country, including a modern Miami stunner. And we tour a pair of West Coast homes, one with famed photographer Gray Malin and the other with Willa Ford, co-star of the e-hit Flip It Like Disick. And we're in the Hamptons for a fun tour inside a stately home dubbed Hobby Hill. But first, this Gramercy showstopper with a unique history and provenance. I designed the rug to read, some girls were born with glitter in their veins. Guilty as charged. Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from this five-story townhouse on the Upper West Side. Built in the late 1800s, its Gilded Age charm has been beautifully preserved from the stately facade to the ornate architectural details on the inside. This entertainer's dream has plenty of spaces to mingle with your guests inside and out. There's even a roof garden with river views. The Serene Master Suite also has a terrace where you can wind down in style. One of seven bedrooms in this approximately 8,000 square foot home. This week we are taking a look at homes all over the country, but we are getting started in the Gramercy Park neighborhood with Houston-based designer Lucinda Loya. This former chapel has had quite a provenance with ties to New York history and rock and roll royalty. This open space with soaring ceilings is Lucinda's home in the city, and she created fashion-forward areas that are eclectic and welcoming. Hi, I'm Lucinda, principal of Lucinda Loya Interiors. Welcome to my fashion-inspired apartment in Gramercy. This building was owned by two prominent families, the Stuyvesants and the Rutherfords. In fact, Stuyvesant Park is just across the street. It was then sold to a Presbyterian church, and this great room became a chapel. Actually, it's called Clapton Chapel because Eric Clapton used to live here. This is a one-of-a-kind room in New York City, but it did have its challenges. I had this incredible ceiling accented with gold medallions, and I did not want to detract from the beauty. So it occurred to me that the best color palette was no color palette at all. Everywhere in this great room, you will see white furniture with accents of black and gold. So once I made up my mind, I purchased this white and gold suit of lights for my husband. You know what they say, happy husband, happy, Another challenge of this space was that it was wide open. So I sectioned it off into three areas, the kitchen, the dining, and this living room. I wanted to make each section unique to itself. At the same time, I wanted the color palette to remain cohesive. Here in the living room, I wanted to make a fashion statement. So I purchased these pieces from Marcel Wander's dress collection, and I dressed it in white and gold. And I placed them all around this industrial coffee table. And for a little bling, I started this golden apple collection. It is the big apple, you know. The dogs, they were just pretty and white. And all of this makes the perfect entertainment spot. Every party in my house includes amazing fare. So I needed an amazing place to serve it. I had this table made in white ultra suede with gold nail heads. It's large enough to serve 10 guests, and of course, it's in keeping with my color palette. This is a great table for dinner parties, but I couldn't resist putting something fabulous in the middle of this room. I found these two amazing pieces by Raffaella Vogel. To take advantage of these two window nooks, I fitted these two buffets on either side of the dining room. And what better place to display my Fornicetti plate collection? And since I want to be a part of it all, I put my stylish office right here. Did I ever imagine I would have all of this in New York City? Well, as Megan Whitmarsh said, all is possible. Up these stairs is a loft with a perfect view of the great room and a guest room. It's small, but with bold patterns and a lot of personality. As I mentioned, I love fashion, and our bedroom is a designer's dream. I continued the same palette, and I covered my walls in a gold and silver wallpaper, because after all, what's fashion without a bit of sparkle? I designed this bed to mimic a Chanel handbag. 
I picked up these reflective gold chain mail pillows from a local discount store. It's the perfect amount of pop. I reserved a corner of the room as a primping spot, and I look forward to sitting in my comfortable Marcel Wanders bell-bottom chair every morning. My closet is the perfect refuge for a fashionista. I have accessories everywhere because I believe accessories can make or break an outfit or a home. In having two stylish divas, I of course brought the fashion inspiration in their room as well. I designed the rug to read, some girls were born with glitter in their veins. Guilty as charged. The beds were designed to mimic crowns and the dresser was made from panels that I purchased through a Fendi store. Inspiration is everywhere. This is a unique space and designing it really let me spread my wings. Here I was inspired by my passion for fashion. But as long as your designs are inspired by all things you love, it will be a success. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Coming back to the break, we are taking a stroll or a roll out east in Watermill. See what I mean when we come right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now, summer may be over, ugh, but we are not done yearning for the sun, the beach, and all else that's so closely associated with the Hamptons. So we journeyed out to Watermill to tour this stately property dubbed Hobby Hill. It's set on nearly two acres of beautifully manicured grounds. Inside the home is filled with fine wood details and design touches that make it feel one of a kind. Check this out. Hi, I'm Joe Piccinini with Coldwell Banker Global Luxury. Welcome to the Hamptons. Today I'm going to show you a magnificent arts and crafts style home sited on 1.7 acres in Watermill, New York. There's so many surprises both inside and out, so what are we waiting for? Come on inside. This home is called Hobby Hill, and it's located on top of a gentle slope. The story begins as soon as you enter the whimsical front gates. You enter on a long hedge driveway which spills out into this regal estate that makes you feel like you've been transported to the English countryside. But before we see the grounds, you have to see the inside. Here we are in the foyer. This is where you first see the arts and crafts style that runs all throughout the interior. Just look at the mahogany wood paneling, the coffered ceilings, and the stained glass windows and doors. It's warm, it's inviting, and it's memorable right from the get-go. And that never lets up. The mahogany continues right into this library. It's a great place to display your artwork and collections. The rare lapis lazuli fireplace is a perfect focal point. This is the best place to be before or after dinner. The formal dining room shows off a theme that runs throughout the whole home. That is, bringing the outside in. These large picture windows frame the grounds beautifully and make for the ideal living artwork. The round table seats 10 and the alabaster marble chandelier emits a warm glow. For more casual dining options, there's the screened in porch, which just happens to be perfect for summer soirees. I know, I've been to a few. Let's face it. The kitchen is always the center of every party, and this one's no different. The warm wood cabinetry contrasts beautifully with the marble countertop and island. But what makes this kitchen really awesome is the fact that it has direct access to and serves the dining room, the screened in porch, and this bar room. This onyx bar makes you want to pour some rosé. And the owners created this opening, so if you're on the screened in porch, you can always get a refill. Cheers. There's still a lot to see, so follow me. Upstairs, there's three bedrooms, each with its own terrace. And the master bedroom not only has its own terrace, but also a staircase down to the pool. This is what the owners affectionately call the jungle room for its decor theme. It's such a cool room with its brick flooring and shingled walls, and huge sliding glass doors that lead to what this home is all about, the outside. This is the Hamptons, which means not just beautiful beaches and homes, but gorgeous grounds. Look around. 
Hobby Hill does not disappoint. There's nearly two acres with rolling lawns and mature trees. Not only that, there's plenty of seating areas for ideal alfresco entertaining. Pool parties, barbecues, the possibilities are endless. There's even a fairy tale inspired secret garden. And if your friends don't believe you, invite them to stay in their very own guest house. Trust me, they'll be believers in Hobby Hill and all its glories before you know it. Well, I hope I've made a believer out of you. Hobby Hill is not just one of my favorite places in Watermill, but it's one of my favorite places in all of the Hamptons. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this one of a kind estate with me. Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time. Coming back to the break, pop star turned design maven Willa Ford shows us around the labor of love she calls home. We'll be right back. You're watching Open House NYC. Now we're at the Toluca Lake bungalow of interior designer Willa Ford. Willa began her career as a pop singer in the early aughts and has turned her experiences traveling the world into a keen eye for style and comfort. She's also one of the co-stars of the e-hit Flip It Like Disick. Let's join her for a closer look at the place she and her family call home. What's up guys, I'm Willa Ford. I am the principal designer of W Ford Interiors and you may have seen me on Flip It Like Disick. Today, I am gonna show you my personal home. It is a Los Angeles 1922 Spanish bungalow. We completely renovated this thing and brought it back to its original glory. I'm so excited to show you guys the property. Come on, let's go. So the first thing you see when you walk in my home is this amazing living room. You're going to see these high vaulted ceilings with this Dutch colonial influence because that was a big thing that happened in the 1920s to all these Spanish homes. Then you're going to see this gorgeous fireplace which was 1970s rock. I ripped all that out and tried to give it what I thought would be more original and modern. And then you're going to see all original bottle glass windows from the 1920s and my pair of gondola sofas that sat in storage for two years from a vintage store. I finally got them recovered and put them in my home. Welcome to the dining room. What I love about my dining room is I totally did a high-low life design. I did this live edge slab table, which was high, but I paired it with target chairs. That's a super high tip. So you can spend money in one area, save in the other so you balance out. And then this vase, I love this vase. I tried to put this vase in Scott Disick's home. He did not like it. It came home with mama. But my favorite part is the bar. I love that I can entertain here, but more importantly, Work mom life balance, storage for my kids' toys. Cheers. So welcome to the master bedroom. My favorite thing in here is our don't give up the ship flag. And then my husband needed a really, really high bed because he has a special box spring from playing in the NFL. So I had an issue. I needed to figure out nightstands. I bought dressers and voila. This is the amazing retreat that I built for myself and my husband. He really doesn't like normal tubs and he wanted something that felt like a locker room tub so he could completely submerge. So we did this instead of a stainless steel tub. And one of my favorite tips about this bathroom is we use subway tile, which subway tile never goes out of style, but when you use it all the way to the ceiling, it looks like a much more luxe material. Even though this house had great bones, the reason we bought this house is for what I'm about to show you, the backyard. What better way to anchor a space than this awesome European fountain that we have? We love entertaining people right here at our dining space. I feel like this pool is truly the anchor of the house. I love that it's not bright blue, but it's really monotone and monochromatic with all of the landscape and the green outside. And in the back corner is my favorite part. I love growing fruits and vegetables because I'm a farmer's daughter. And a pro parent tip I would say is if your kids grow it with you, they'll eat it. Thank you so much for joining me on my home tour. This house truly has been a labor of love for my husband and I. Until next time, see ya. Coming back to the break, we are in Miami for a look at a sprawling design forward penthouse high above the city. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in Miami for a look at the largest single floor condominium in the whole city. The apartment is well over 10,600 square feet and filled with unique design and architectural touches. Take a look at this. Hello, I'm Brian Silverson with Douglas Elliman, Miami. Today I'll be showing you this magnificent penthouse at the Grove at Grand Bay, Coconut Grove. This property is the largest condo on one floor in Miami. The architect, Bjarke Engels, decided to find a way to spin the actual structure of the building as it goes off, giving it a unique footprint that you really don't see anywhere. Well, I have a lot to show you. Let's take a look around. So when you first come off the elevator into the apartment, you enter into what we would call a great room. It actually is divided down to four different spaces. The first being an informal sitting room, second being a formal sitting room which has wood panels so you can actually block it off if needed. And then you have a beautiful dining room and then at the other end you will have a bar area. The apartment being 11,000 square feet on one floor with 12 foot ceilings. It also has 2,500 square foot of outside space. The balconies run the whole length of the apartment. Something like this is virtually impossible to find. The setting that close to the water and then having the angle to see the skyline of Miami, it's pretty unique to say the least. So the north end of the apartment has the master suite. It starts with a library, an office, this massive bedroom. It has a chic dressing room, midnight kitchen, bathroom with two tubs and oversized showers. And of course, the best part has to be this view. On one end, you have the panoramic vistas of the city skyline, and the other, the serene views of Biscayne Bay and beyond. Just imagine taking in the sunset with a glass of wine and your very own wraparound terrace, enjoying these beautiful views. It just doesn't get any better than this. What better place to end this tour than on this oversized balcony where you can have an intimate gathering with about 500 of your best friends. This is truly a one-of-a-kind masterpiece sitting on top of an architectural marble in the center actually of the heart of Miami. It's as good as it gets. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Coming up just after the break, photographer Gray Malin shows us his West Hollywood dream home. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're with photographer and author Gray Malin in Los Angeles. Though known for his signature sun-drenched aerials of beaches, Gray has evolved into a lifestyle renaissance maven with projects that range from interior design, DIY, travel, and even advice. One of his mottos is make every day a getaway. I love that. And he truly embodied that in the design of his own West Hollywood home. See how. Hi everyone, I'm Gray Malin, fine art photographer and New York Times bestselling author. And today I'm thrilled to take you inside my house, which I recently moved into here in West Hollywood. Our entire house has this colonial Southern look, which is really unique for West Hollywood. Let's go on inside and I'll give you the grand tour. Our family room is by far the most comfortable room in the entire house. So the standout moment in our family room is the wall of glass that sits facing the backyard. It brings all of the natural light in, and we even have two banana leaf plants that accentuate the greenery right into the room. And to finish it all off, we added these low glass tables below the artwork, which are filled with some of my favorite books and little fun, quirky items I picked up from my travels. Next, we're gonna head upstairs and check out my little coastal retreat. This room was actually inspired by a trip we took to the Bahamas, and we wanted to bring in some warmth and a little bit of the old world pattern and textile. We decided to paint the fireplace a dark blue. We mirrored that with the dark blue painted on the back of the French doors. The bed in this room is definitely a wow factor. We decided to add a balance above that anchors the room. But one of the most unique spots in the entire house is our sun deck. So let's head upstairs and take a look at that. Welcome to the sun deck. 
This is a total escape from the rest of the house. Since our home is located right in the center of Los Angeles, we have views of iconic spots like the Hollywood sign and even downtown LA. I love that we also have an outdoor kitchen up here with a grill so we can have dinner. We can also sit down, relax, have a cocktail. It's just a true oasis in the middle of such a bustling city. Thank you all so much for joining me on this tour of my house. Designing this home has been a real journey, just like a lot of my artwork, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?